हाय फ्रेंड्स लेट्स टॉक अबाउट नॉन यूनियन ऑफ लॉन्ग बोन नॉन यूनियन लॉन्ग बोन इज वन ऑफ द थिंग्स दैट वी शुड रिमेंबर इफ वी आर अपियरिंग फॉर अवर एम एस और डी एन बी एग्जाम्स यू विल प्रैक्टिस एज एन ऑर्थोपेडिशियन टूमोरो इन इंडिया और थ्रू आउट द वर्ल्ड एंड यू विल बी एनकाउंटरिंग नॉन यूनियन दिस इज समथिंग दैट एन ऑर्थोपेडिशियन लिवस इन डे इन डे आउट विथ the principles of non union and their management should be very well understood union how do you classify non union so there is an umerov classification which says normotrophic bone without shortening is type 1 type 2 is a hypertrophic bone and with shortening type 3 is an atrophic bone and with shortening type 4 is atrophic bone and with soft tissue defect usually with a shortening so you are going to a normotrophic bone without shortening hypertrophic non union atrophic non union and atrophic bone with a soft tissue defect so when there is a non infected non union so weber and check modified the muller and judet and judet classification systems so what is the weber and check classification for non infected non union it talks about viability of the bone ends determined by the strontium take so if you have non infected non union so you can check the viability of the bone ends by the strontium uptake now looking at whether you are having a hypervascular or atrophic avascular so there have been different non unions so weber and check have given this viability test by the strontium uptake so when you have hypervascular non union it can be a elephant foot so there is not inadequate fixation so the bony ends keep on rubbing together and they will form a useless copious amount of cartilage cartilaginous callus there which will not bridge and will not unite so what do they have they have enough of cartilage like material callus but what they don't have is stability to bridge the callus so the callus stage will never change into consolidation stage of bone union so this is an elephant foot or inadequate fixation or immobilization which is because of premature weight bearing second is horse's hoof it's because of moderately unstable so hypertrophic elephant foot is markedly unstable horse's hoof there is moderately unstable an oligotrophic when there is an inadequate compression or opposition of the fracture site when they are displaced so oligotrophic horse's hoof an elephant foot they are hypervascular vascularity is more but it's the extent of the callus or the cartilaginous material which is available there which decides out of the three which type is there in the hypervascular or hypertrophic non union whereas when we go to atrophic non union you have a torsion wedge so intermediate fragment is there which heals to one main fragment of bone but not to the other so this is healing to one but not to the other or you can have a comminuted necrotic fragment in between which does not unite or you can have a loss of the gap or you can have an end porotic and atrophic because of the loss of blood supply so these are the types of atrophic non union you can have a gap non union you can have atrophic with osteoporotic bone ends you can have comminuted necrotic or you can have a torsion wedge these are avascular so hypervascular avascular now there is a pales classification for tibial non union what he did was he said there are two types type a and type b type a is less than 1 cm bone loss or no bone loss type a1 is a mobile deformity frankly mobile <coughs> type a2 is a fixed deformity so type a2 is a stiff non union with deformity without deformity and stiff non union with fixed deformity so type a1 is a mobile deformity a2 is a fixed deformity but stiff non union and a22 is stiff non union with fixed deformity type b bone defect but no shortening is b1 shortening but no defect is b2 and b3 is shortening with defect so it's causing a loss so b1 you have a gap but no shortening so like an intact fibula here is maintaining it 
but here the fibula also fractured so overall there is a loss of length and here the fibula fracture and the gap also is there so both the things exist how do you clinically determine this is a non-union and not delayed union or pseudoarthrosis presence of painless abnormal mobility at the site in two perpendicular planes is pathognomic of non-union so if i have anteroposterior plane and the medial lateral plane and if i have mobility painless abnormal mobility this is non-union there can be sounds while rubbing called as crepitus there can be a telescopy of fragments in a lax non-union there will be a loss of transmitted movements there can be a palpable gaff in atrophic non-union and the patient will not be able to bear weight these are the important other findings but painless abnormal mobility in the side in two permanent planes is deemed pathognomic of non-union in delayed union there is some pain and tenderness on manipulation of the fracture when abnormal mobility usually in one plane but in non-union you'll have in two planes and even if in delayed union you have some abnormal mobility it not be gross as in non-union it will be a gross in pseudoarthrosis you have gross abnormal mobility all around in all directions and there is no crepitus no hearing of sound because it's like covered with a fibro cartilage for details of pseudoarthrosis I have given an example of congenital pseudoarthrosis of tibia. You can look at the features in that talk as well. When we talk about non-union is a painless mobility in more than two planes. In two planes. Is it always painless? No. This is a question which I was asked when I was given a non-union case in my MS orthopedics. Is it necessary that a non-union has to be painless? The answer is no. The causes of Pain in a non-union are infection, soft tissue interposition, especially the muscles and the nerves which are viable, intra-articular non-unions, bionate non-unions which are impinging on the surrounding tissues with the bursa formations and the bursitis. Infection tops the list as number one. So if you have a non-union with pain, think about infective etiologies. How do you differentiate from a stiff from a lax non-union. Stiff non-union have an arc of motion. Now these are usually less than 7 degrees and classically less than 1 centimeter defect. They are not bridged by fibrocartilage and they resist the movement grassly. Only micro motion can be elicited. Even the patient may partially be able to bear weight. They are also called as non-mobile non-unions or short fibrous non-unions. So there is fibrous structure in between. Whereas lax non-unions have an arc of motion of more than 7 degrees. They are inadequately supported by the connective tissue. They are the ones which you classically say painless mobility in two planes. They are also called as long non-unions or mobile non-unions. Intra-articular short fibrous non-unions are painful and the concept of painless non-union does not apply to them. Do all union, did all unions demonstrate abnormal mobility? Will all the non-union demonstrate abnormal mobility? Not always. One example we just discussed, stiff non-unions. Typically the hypertrophic ones may not at all demonstrate abnormal mobility. Also, some site-specific non-unions like in diaphyseal tibial non-union where fibula is intact that can mark 